And I want to connect it to joy. And then connect it to how we relate to God and to people. So today we go into the application. How does it affect our Christian life? In Matthew 11, uh, verse 28 to 30, uh, that Jesus said, Come to me. 11, 11 verses 28 to 30. Yeah. Now you will be familiar with this passage. That Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I'll give you rest. Because I'm, I'm gentle and meek. Yeah. yeah, it's 11, it's not 12. No, I didn't say 12. You I said love. I said love. Yes, I said Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then Jesus said, "I'm humble and meek." Ah, jo, jo, yes, I'm meek and humble. Now, so take my yoke and learn from me. Now, would you, would you defend me one? And then, you know, um. Take my yoke and learn from me. Eh, would you defend me one? And then you'll find rest in your heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus here tells us how we should live our Christian life. The way to live the Christian life is to know that all our burdens we want to bring to Jesus. Jesus will take away our burdens. And he is humble and meek. And then when we so he's very humble to help us. He's very humble. And he's very gentle. And then we take his yoke and learn from him. Now, yeah. So we take the yoke and learn from him. Yeah, now, take the yoke. Yeah. So take the yoke means to serve God with Jesus. And learn the life of Jesus. Now, then we'll find rest in our heart and our soul. Now there are many Christians, many pastors who are doing ministry. That very often we have a lot of burdens. The church is not growing. The people are not loving God. And many people say, my burden is heavy. The yoke is not easy, like Jesus said. Like The yoke is not easy, as Jesus said. Yeah. So many Christians don't find this freedom in Jesus. Where does the freedom come from? It comes from the fact that Jesus is bearing the burden for us. He will give us peace. He is helping us. And he has a wonderful plan of revival. Why is there no revival yet? 
wamsho. Because people are not letting Jesus take over. Ni kwa sababu watu wamekataa kumwachia Kristo aendeleze maisha. People are doing their own ways. Watu wanafanya kwa njia zao. When people are following their own ways, watu wanapofuata njia zao, they just reveal people. Wanaanza basi kuwakemea wengine people. Wanaanza kuwekea vikwazo. And you think that by accusing people people will love the Lord more. Na wanafikiria kwamba wanapowakemea watu basi wengine watawapenda zaidi. But Jesus doesn't say that. Lakini Yesu hasemi hivyo. Jesus says, I have, you know, come to me. If you are burdened, come to me. I'll give you rest. Yesu anasema kama umechoshwa na kubebeshwa mizigo mizito, njoo kwangu utapata pumziko. I will help you. Nitakusaidia. And I'll change your life. Na nitabadilisha maisha yako. So you need to learn from me. Ya kwamba ukajifundishe kutoka kwangu. Learn the peace and the freedom in me. Ukajifundishe amani na uhuru ulio ndani yako. When Jesus was doing ministry on earth, Yesu alipokuwa akifanya huduma hapa duniani, he was very humble and gentle. Alikuwa mnyekevu na mpole. And he you know even when people have a lot of sins, ikijapokuwa watu walikuwa na dhambi nyingi, now he didn't call people to repentance. Lakini yeye aliwafundisha watu akiwaelekeza kwenye toba. Jesus was saying, you know, neither do I forgive you. The, the adulterous woman, the adulterous woman he said, Neither do I condemn you. Akamwambia yule mwanamke aliyekuwa msinifu kwamba sitakuhukumu lakini mimi nitakusamehe. But sin no more. Lakini usitende dhambi mara tu. So Jesus told the people to sin no more. Yesu amefundisha watu wasitende dhambi tena. And then in John chapter 5 verse 14, katika kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 5 mstari wa 14, there was a man who was sick for 38 years. Kulikuwa na mwanaume aliyekuwa mgonjwa katika miaka 38. And Jesus healed him na Yesu akamponya and then Jesus said sin no more na Yesu akamwambia usitende dhambi tena lest the worst thing will happen to you ya kwamba kama utatenda dhambi mambo mabaya yatakupata so Jesus told them don't sin anymore because when you sin you give into the devil and the devil will destroy your life you the worst thing will happen to you. Kwa hivyo Yesu alimwambia kwamba usitende dhambi manake unapotenda dhambi unampa shetani nafasi maisha yako wako na maisha yako yatakuwa mabaya zaidi. You can get sick. Unaweza kuwa mgonjwa. Your condition can be worse. Hali yako yaweza kuwa mbaya zaidi. And your family can break up. Na hata familia yako yaweza kuvunjika. The whole life can be destroyed. Maisha yako yote inaweza kuwa So don't sin anymore. Kwa hivyo usitende dhambi mara tena. So Jesus did tell the people not to sin. So Yesu sio kwamba hakuambia watu wasitende dhambi. But Jesus did not say I force you not to sin. Lakini Yesu hakuambia kwamba ninamshurutisha usitende dhambi. Or I accuse you because you have sinned. Ya kwa ama aseme kwamba ninawahukumu kwa sababu umetenda dhambi. We see that Jesus has a very gentle spirit. Tunaona Yesu alikuwa na roho ya upole. He let people know they are important. Aliacha watu wajue kwamba wao watu wenyewe binafsi ni watu muhimu. He always gives hope to people. Yeye aliwapa watu tumaini. When he told the disciples, you are of little faith. Alipowaambia wale wanafunzi wake kwamba wako na imani ndogo, but Jesus did not stop there. Jesus did not stop there by saying they are of little faith. Lakini Yesu hakuachisha hapo kuambia kwamba basi nyinyi muende kwa sababu muna imani ndogo. And Jesus said if you have faith like a little mustard seed, Yesu akamwambia kama utakuwa na imani vile inayofanana kama mbegu ya haradali, you can move the mountain. Utafanya milima iondoke na yenye. So Jesus is giving them hope. Kwa hivyo Yesu alikuwa anawapa tumaini because the power is not in us. Kwa sababu uwezo ha is in God. Lakini uwezo huko ndani ya Mungu. He has the power to move mountains. Mungu hako na uwezo wa kusongesha milima. When we know that we rely on God, ya kwamba tunapomtegemea Mungu, then we have the faith to move mountains. Tutakuwa na imani ya kusongesha milima. And our miracles follow us. Na hata miujiza na ishara zitatufuata. Now, when we trust in Jesus, tunapoamini Kristo Yesu, our life can be joyful. Maisha yetu yatakuwa ya furaha. And we'll have much strength. Na tutakuwa na nguvu zaidi. And many miracles. Na miujiza mingi. At the same time we can rejoice. Na katika hiyo hali pia unaweza kufurahia katika Bwana. 
Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Freya katika Bwana jamani nasema freya katika Bwana. Have you heard this song? Do you have this song here? Kuna huo wimbo hapa. Okay. So Christians can rejoice in the Lord. Kwa hivyo wakristo wanaweza kufurahia katika Bwana. Because we know God is almighty. Kwa sababu tunajua kwamba Mungu ni mkuu and God is full of love. Na Mungu amejaliwa na upendo. He wants to help na anataka kusaidia. He is able to help. Ako na uwezo wa kusaidia. When we just put down ourselves. Kama tutajinyenyekesha chini sisi. Humble ourselves. Tujinyenyekeshe kabisa. I believe that God loves us. Na tuamini kwamba Mungu anatupenda. He helping us. Na yeye anatusaidia. And we submit our whole life to God. Na unawaachilia maisha yako yote unampa Mungu. Let me say this. What are they saying here? If everyone here, kama yoyote hapa, you really live in the love of God. Ya kwamba unaishi katika upendo. God is loving me. Mungu ananipenda. God is helping me. Mungu ananisaidia. And I want to do my best to na, love God and love people. Na lafu wewe sasa unataka ufanye zaidi upende Mungu na upende watu wengine. Revival has already come to your heart. Uamsho umeshakuja ndani ya moyo wako. God wants to bring revival. Mungu anataka kuleta uamsho. I use a picture. This is God. Anatumia picha anasema kwamba huyu ni Mungu. This no, this is us. This this mic is us. Hiki kipasa sauti sasa kinaashiria sisi wanadamu. And God says I have a plan of revival. Na Mungu anasema kwamba ako na mpango wa uamsho. I can do great things for you. Mungu anasema anataka kufanya mambo makubwa kwa ajili yetu. And if this person is very humble. Na sasa huyu mtu kama atanyenyekea. Lord, I just trust in you. Aseme kwamba Mungu ninakuamini wewe. I trust in you. Mimi nikiwa ndani mwako na Mungu. I have the joy of the Holy Spirit. Na ninatamani roho wako mtakatifu. I love you God. Na upendo wa Mungu. I have the freedom of God. Na uhuru wa Mungu. Then his life is transformed. Utapata maisha huyu mtu yamebadilishwa then god can do great things in this life na unaona maisha ya huyo mtu mungu anaanza kufanya mambo makubwa zaidi people are not transformed by accusation watu hawabadilishi kwa sababu tunawakemea people are transformed by the love of god watu wanabadilishwa kwa ajili ya upendo wa so every day when we wake up kwa hivyo kila siku unapoamka i know that god is loving me unasema kwamba najua mungu ananipenda god is blessing me mungu ananibariki any time i love him kila wakati unapompenda he is very happy yeye anafurahia any time i serve god wakati unapomtumikia mungu god is very happy mungu anafurahi So I want to do more things for God. Kwa hivyo nataka kufanya mambo mengi kwa Mungu. I want to serve God more. Nataka kumtumikia Mungu zaidi. Then this person already has revival. Ina maana kwamba huyu mtu tayari anao uamsho. Many people think of revival is very far away. Watu wengi wanafikiria kwamba uamsho huko mbali sana nao. They will say revival or bring revival to Congo. Aha, wanasema eh uamsho utakuja lini mjini Congo? God, when will you work? Mungu utafanya kazi lini nchini Kongo? Come quickly. Hebu Mungu njo haraka. Work quickly. Uje haraka Mungu. They pray as if God doesn't want a revival. Yaani wanaomba kana kwamba Mungu hataki uamsho. They pray as if they were bringing in the revival. Yaani wanaomba kana kwamba wao ndio wanaoleta uamsho. Revival came from God's nature. Uamsho unatoka katika uwasilia wa Mungu. Revival came from his love and his power. Uamsho unatoka katika upendo na nguvu za Mungu. And he's looking for people who really get strength from his love. Na ana Mungu anaangalia wale watu ambao wanapokea nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu kwa upendo wa Mungu. That who can enjoy the love of God? Wale wanaweza kuburudika katika upendo wa Mungu. Motivated by the love of God, wanaweza kushawishika na upendo wa Mungu. Changed by the love of God, wanaweza kubadilishwa na upendo wa Mungu. And they have confidence God is working with them. Na sasa wako na ujasiri kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi kila wakati. And they are willing to give the whole life to God. Na sasa wako tayari kuachilia maisha yao yote kwa Mungu. And this person is full of freedom and joy. Utapata mtu huyu ako na uhuru na ni mtu anaishi maisha ambayo hayana matatizo. And then when people see that, na sasa watu wengine wanapoona mtu sambuli hiyo. They will say this person really have the life of God. Watu wataanza kusema kwa kweli mtu huyu ni tofauti, ni mtu wa Mungu huyu. He's 
not like the people in the world. Yani huyo mtu hafanani na wale watu wa mataifa. I have to say this, many people serve God with the way of the world. They thought that when we accuse people, you are lazy, you have to repent. Now, we tell people to repent, but the way they say it is like, you are too bad, you are too bad. Yadi na maana kwamba hawa watu wanamtumikia Mungu alafu wakitaka kuwaleta watu katika toba wanawaleta katika mashtaka na kuwa hukumu. Kwa hivyo kuleta watu katika toba lazima njia yako ya kuwaleta ikuwe njia nzuri. They think that they will get all the people before people will change. Wanafikiria kwamba wakiwapigia watu kelele watu watabadilika. They are behaving like the people in the world. Yaani wao ndio ni wahuduma wa Mungu lakini wanafanana na watu ambao wako duniani bali. But we can learn to be like God. Lakini tunaweza kujifundisha Jesus has a lot to do. Mungu anayo Yesu anayo mengi ya kufanya. But Jesus was very relaxed when he was on earth. Lakini Yesu alikuwa mpole alipokuwa duniani. He did not say I have too much to do. Yesu hakusema kwamba ninayo kazi nyingi ya kufanya. Jesus did not show frustration. Yesu hakuonyesha kukasirika. He has confidence. Yeye alikuwa na ujasiri. So when he prayed, when he raised people from the dead, when he healed people, aliponya watu akawaangusha wengine kutoka kwenye vifo, he has confidence in God. Yeye Yesu alikuwa na ujasiri kwa Mungu aliyemtuma. So I want to say if we want revival, nataka kusema basi kama tungelipenda kuona uamsho, we need the love of God. Tunahitaji upendo wa Mungu. And then when we have the love of God, na tukisha kuwa na upendo wa Mungu, Everywhere we see God's love and work. Popote unapokuwa utaona upendo na kazi ya Mungu. And then we can rejoice. Na sasa utafurahia. When we have the blessings every day. Na utaanza kuhesabu baraka za Mungu kila siku. Thank God for giving me strength. Unamwambia Mungu asante Mungu kwa kunijaza nguvu. Thank God I can experience the peace of God. Unashukuru Mungu kwa sababu unaweza kuhisi upendo wake. Thank God I can pray for people who experience the peace of God. Unashukuru Mungu kwa sababu unaweza kuombea watu na wakahisi uwepo wa Mungu. That means God is working with me. Inamaanisha kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi ndani mwako. So I can rejoice. Kwa hivyo unaweza kufurahisha. I can all the blessings I rejoice. Utafurahia katika kuana kwa sababu unazo baraka zote za Mungu. And I can relax. Na wewe hautakuwa na mawa. At the same time, I motivate people to change. Na katika wakati huo pia unawashawishi watu wengine kubadilika. And tell them the potential, their potential in God. Na unawambia kuamba hao watu pia ni mamuimu katika mikono za mungu. Tell them how precious their life is. Unawambia jinsi maisha yao ya livyo ya damani. And whatever good things they do, I will appreciate that. Na chochote ambacho wanakifanya unawashuku. And lift them up to a higher level. Na unawainua katika katika viwango vingine that be that way our ministry will go higher and higher ina maanisha kwamba basi huduma wetu utaenda juu na juu zaidi now let me ask you about this concept of revival washindi waulize basi hivi swala la uamsho god wants revival mungu anataka uamsho he's just looking for people anajaribu tu kuwatafuta watu who come to him with all the burdens wanaokuja kwa Mungu na mizigo yao yote and put down the burdens na kumwachilia Mungu mizigo yao yote and take his yoke na wachukue nira ya Mungu and learn the life of love and joy of Jesus na wajifundishe maisha ya upendo na furaha ya Yesu when we have this life tunapokuwa na maisha haya then the burden is light utapata kwamba mizigo sasa imekuwa mepesi and the yoke is easy na nira imekuwa rahisi and then he will guide you na Mungu atakuongoza. Can you believe this that it's God who wants revival? Je, unaweza kuamini kwamba Mungu ndiye anayetaka uamsho? It's people who are not ready yet. Lakini watu nao hawajakuwa tayari. When we have a pure love, tunapokuwa na upendo usio kuwa na madoa doa. Don't use our ways, don't use our methods. Usitumie njia ama sampuli zingine. Use the ways of God. Tumia tu njia za Mungu, not human ways. Usitumie njia za kibinadamu. So first every day we rejoice in the Lord. Kwa hivyo kila siku unafurahia katika Mungu. God is loving me. Mungu unanipenda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can enjoy God. Unaweza basi ukamsherekea. God is blessing me. Mungu unanibariki. I want God. Ninamtaka Mungu. And God wants me. Na Mungu anahitaji. It's so wonderful. Yeye ni wa ajabu. I can thank God 
with joy. I can be filled with joy. And I'm sure the Lord will change me. Na sasa furaha ya kuwana itakibadilisha Do you believe that joy and the love of God is the key to revival? Je, muna amini kwa pa furaha na upenda wa muku ndiyo ufunguwa kuleta uamsho And then the submission to God Na kujiachilia kwa muku Obedience to God Unakuwa mtihifu kwa muku And have the faith to pray for people Na unakuwa na imani hati ya kuombea wa And have the faith to build up people Na unakuwa na imani ya kuwa jenga wa tuwekini Then God can use us to bring revival Na sasa muku akitumia sisi kuleta uamsho now there are people uh, who do this every week they will be telling the members you are not you are lazy you are not loving God so every week they, they hear messages like that kwa hivyo kuna watu ambao kila juma wanasikia jumbe kama watu wanawambia kama nyinyi ni wazembe nyinyi hamwezi fanya vizuri nyinyi hata hampendi Mungu and these Christians always feel we useless Na sasa hawa wa kurisho wanao sikia marino haya Wanajiona mwamba wa wata hawa fai We cannot do anything Sisi hatuwezi tukafanya lolote Because we always hear that we are bad Kwa sababu kila simu sisi tunasikia tukiambiwa kwamba sisi ni wabaya So we cannot do much Inamana kwamba hatuwezi tukafanya zaidi Just help me Hebu unisaidie I cannot help anyone Siwezi ni kasaidia mtio yote But when we raise some people Lakini sisi kama viongozi tunaweza kuinua watu wengini God loves you Na mungu wa kutupenda God wants to use you Una muambia yule mtu kwa mba mungu wa na kupenda 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 Ya kwa mba mungu wa na wuza kutumia Ukafanya mambo makuhu When you begin to love people Unapendelea kuwapenda watu God likes it Mungu wa na kufraishu And God will use you Na mungu wa na kutumia So in your church you look for the people Who are willing to love God and submit to God Basi wewe kama kiongozi Kanisani mwako Jaribu kuangalia wale watu Amba wako tayari kufanyia mungu kazi And always encourage them Na hawa watu kila siku Uwaimize uwatie moyo Look at all the good things they've done Angalia vitu vita viema Amba wame vifanya And appreciate them Na unawashukuru Instead of looking at what they have not done well Ya kuamba usikuwe unangalia vile vitu vidogo Amba hawanya vifanya vizuri we can see what they've done well. We appreciate them. And then we say you can do better. As for the weakness, we can tell them gently. Do you want to work on these weaknesses? And I believe that, I know that you can overcome them. Unawambia kuamba mimi ninaamini kuamba unaweza kushinda hii. You can become better. Unaweza kuwa mtu mwema zaidi. So the ministry is always giving people hope. Uduma ni kuamba watu tumaini. That you are loved by God. Ya kuamba haa unapendo na mungu. You can do great things. Unaweza kufanya mambo makubwa. Good things will happen to you. Mambo makubwa inaweza kutubeke ya wewe. Now, do you have any question about this? This? Jee, kuna mtu ambaya kuna suwali kusi mamba baya. This idea of ministry. Katika haya mambo ya uduma. It's motivated by the love of God. Ya kuamba mtu anashawishika tuna upendo wa mungu. That the love of God compels us. Ya kuamba upendo wa mungu niyo unao tusukuma. That we are motivated by love. Ya kuamba sisi tumechochewa na upendo. And we know that God is more than willing to help us. Na tunajua kuamba mungu wako tayari kusaidia sisi. God is looking for people that he will raise you up. Mungu anatafuta watu ambao atawainua zaidi. Okay.